So I recently did a first look at MX Linux with XFCE. XFCE. XFCE is not my preferred desktop environment, but it did make me curious enough that now I'm going to have a look at MX Linux with KDE. And KDE is, is my jam for sure. And we're going to have a look. If uh, the install is not much different from the other one, I'd probably do a whole lot of fast forwarding and get us into the meat of the project. I still love this old school look. I don't know if they did that intentionally or not, but I love it. Whoa, that's cool. Man, that was neat. Yeah, it seemed like it booted up really fast. What are these? System load. Three cores. Cool. Cool, cool. And uh, I've got my hard drive and MAM and CPU and I have my three cores down here. Man, that's cool. I like it. Okay, let's get installed. As far as I can tell, the install is going to be the same. I won't get locked up trying to figure out what to do when it says waiting for user input. I will definitely say that the KDE version looks a lot cleaner. Everything is more crisp and vibrant. All right, we are installed. And we're going to have a look around and I have a quick button to the system settings. I want to see what that brings up because of what I'm used to. System settings. A global theme. Okay, plasma style. All of this I'm pretty used to. I'm trying to see if there's something different in MX. Okay, I don't see anything in the plasma menu that is different than what I'm used to. So let's see if there is. Okay, they're using that. Style. That's and that makes sense. They probably want it to look similar to the XFCE variety. 
We have a lot of MX tools. Codex installer. Boot repair. Boot options. Let's we'll see what boot options gives us. a nice little boot menu this right here boot 2 is actually really good if you have additional if you have a dual boot or a triple boot you can set the one that defaults and you can set menu timeout so it boots right into it pretty nice so back into MX tools Boot options, boot repair, MX cleanup, codec installer, that's pretty cool. Conky, date and time, live USB maker, network assistant, package installer, remaster CC, don't know what that is. Let's have a look. Remaster control center allows you to rework an ISO while it's running live. That's cool. Kind of too late for me to use it now, but that's still pretty cool. Repo manager. Let's have a look at that. You can pick the closest one to you. Select fastest MX repo for me. That's a, probably a good thing to do at least once in a while. At least once after you've installed the operating system. Wow. Seattle, Washington is the fastest one for me in East Tennessee. That's, that's a long ways away. That's all I'm saying. Debian, Debian repos, uh, running on bullseye and individual sources. Okay. Restore original app sources. That's interesting. All right, let's go back into the MX tools. Cause I'm curious. Repo manager, Samba config, Samba. Samba used to be such a pain in my backside. Uh, I don't really use it anymore, mostly because of that reason. I want to look. Shares, add shares, users, Samba is running, Samba auto starts enabled. Add name, path, comment, guest. Man, this looks really nice. Everyone restricted. Nice. I might have to try that out one of these days. All right, back to MX Tools. Uh, select sound. What is that? Yeah, okay. I was wondering if it was Pipewire versus Pulse Audio, but it's not. Uh, snapshot Tools, Tour, Tweak. User manager and welcome. NVIDIA driver installer. I do not use NVIDIA. All right. Uh, Office has LibreOffice settings. There is an ad block. That's good. System. That must be the KDE variety of dial up. Yeah, I don't have a excess concentrator, I don't think. Oh, the things that pop up when you just click things you don't know what you're clicking on. Okay, we'll close that out. All right. Uh, back in time, that is a backup tool. That's good. Uh, no, I don't want to restore, but I want to look at it. Uh, general include, exclude, auto remove, older than 10 years by default. Yeah, that's pretty old. Uh, options. Expert options, general. Restore config, edit user, edit user callback. Local. I am looking for make a snapshot now. 
Maybe if I can figure that. Where is the make a backup now button? Yeah, I don't know. You must select at least one folder to back up. I did. Oh, on the include. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's probably it. All right, games. We have uh, Hey Mines, Hey Saruko, Hey Mahjong, Hell Breakout, and Peggy. Um, hey Mahjong. I used to play that quite a bit. This is one of those games where it's not much excitement, but it'll keep you busy. Yeah, and it's pretty. Everything KDE is pretty, in my opinion. Graphics, Digicam, a new um, GIMP, Winview, Lays Paint, LibreOffice Draw, and Ocular, Internet, Firefox, of course, KDE Connect. Love KDE Connect. Can't say enough good things about KDE Connect. Firefox, oh, I did that. Um, I already see, you don't know what that is. K-Torrent, I, I don't torrent very often, but when I do, it's K-Torrent. Uh, open unconnected device via KDE Connect. It's interesting. Thunderbird, I actually use K-Mail now because of Wayland not having a... Wayland doesn't have a tray icon and uh, tray notifications. In KDE, so but K mail does, and then I have K mail configured, and it works absolutely beautiful. Okay, multimedia, awesome mixer, Clementine K3BE, you know, 3BE, what K3B, uh, Pulse Audio Control, VLC, Webcamoid. Uh, we already looked at that, and that, and that settings. Uh, yeah, system settings. Uh, oh, we do have Yakuake. That's cool. Yakuake is pretty cool. I didn't like it at first, but now that I've used it a lot, I really do like it. You can activate it with F12, which that activated my main system. Or you can hit that button right there with your mouse. It'll also activate it. That's pretty cool. Yakuwake is pretty cool. Arc is the zip, the zip master controller, whatever you want to call it, for KDE, Conky Manager, Conky Toggle. I don't know what Conky is. Uh, Kate is a very powerful little notepad, and K Write is actually the same notepad but with less options, a little bit easier, a little bit cleaner. Spectacle for images, I believe. SMB cave, SMB 4K. Midnight Commander is a file browser, I believe. Like old school as you can get kind of file browser. I haven't seen that in a long time. Phew. Alrighty. And let's see if it's got the alternatives. Show alternatives. I believe that's the one I use on mine. Yeah, I believe that's the one I use on mine right here. Let's see what the other one is. That's the full screen one. I don't use that one. I do use that one. Okay. That's the one that I use. Let's see what uh, version we're on here. Plasma. 5.15.2. Not bad. Uh, plasma version. 5.20. Nice. 
This is pretty. This is prettier than mine, actually. I'll give it that. So, yeah. It's prettier than mine. Hmm, how about that? Let me see what mine looks like. Yep, that's what they look like side by side. Maybe it's just, maybe it's more along the lines of dark mode. Definitely a different theme going on. But anyway, yeah. And, well, since I have this up, my Manjaro is KD Plasma version 5.24.5. And on the MX Linux, it's 5.20.5. KD Frameworks on my Manjaro 5.94.0 versus 5.78.0 and QT version on mine 5.15.4 versus 5.15.2 and the kernel you can probably put, install your own kernel but kernel on the Majero I'm running is 5.17.13 versus 5.10.0-13 so definitely an older quite the older version and I'm pretty sure that even if you went with even if you went with Kubuntu, it would be it would not be that old of a version. So that is definitely one strike against MX Linux. The Kitty Plasma version in MX Linux is very old, which makes sense considering it's pulling in from Debian. All right. Nothing shocking compared to the XFCE version. It's a it's a very good implementation of trying to keep the two different desktop environments looking very similar. I still prefer KDE. It's just, in my opinion, it's a little bit cleaner, uh, a little bit nicer on the eyes. But MX Linux, I can definitely uh, recommend MX Linux. I would have to use it for a while to see if I'd recommend it over Kubuntu, maybe. Uh, I like it. I also like Kubuntu for the not terribly tech savvy individuals. And this would be a good beginners. The, the uh, install is not super intuitive and easy. I mean, it's easy, but it's not the easiest I've seen. So there is that, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But that's all for this video for now. Let me know what you think about MX Linux in the comments below. And if you like what I do here, please like and subscribe. Make an old trucker happy. Until next video, thanks for watching.